Thanks, Kate. So it's my pleasure to be here today. I think that um, I'm really excited to talk to you about um, STEM and uh, my journey in terms of getting an education in actually mechanical engineering, um, my journey, and how um, the career um, that I've forged also in technology leveraged from my engineering background has just given me so many immense opportunities and I think doors have opened that probably wouldn't have otherwise. So let me jump into it. I'm going to try and actually go through this fairly quickly so we have time for questions and answers. So a little bit about my background in growing up. So growing up, I actually really loved math and I loved the specificity of it. I loved that there was one exact right answer. I also really loved science. And I was thinking just today about what it is about science that I really like. And I think technology in general. And when I was in school, I tended towards liking those classes and, and reading those books and that sort of thing. And it was because I liked things that were undiscovered or future oriented. So things like history, I was like, why read about the past? I wanted to understand the future. Um, and I was also fortunate that um, growing up, my parents never held me back in terms of my ability to learn something or do something. Um, I never thought that because I was a girl or because I was super short that I had <laughs> options that you know, weren't available to me. Um, additionally, I um, found some role models and somewhat purposeful and somewhat accidental. And so early on um, in, I think it was like middle school or high school, I had an opportunity to be part of a group of students that did um, a special science project that we went off site. And mine was a water quality project. Um, and this was actually I'm going to date myself, but like, you know, 30 years ago when water quality in rivers was really poor. And so I saw firsthand sort of um, how learning um, about science and technology and what have you could have a real impact on um, the environment, society, the way we live, etc. And that was really important to me. I also um, made sure that I took the time to really um, explore options available to me. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about um, fostering your interest and seeking opportunities. And I actually think today there are more opportunities available to you than there were to me back then. But even then, I knew that there were opportunities for me to foster my interest in math and science outside of school. And so some of the things I did was I would take part in um, clubs and groups that were um, science and math oriented. But additionally, um, one of the biggest opportunities I had was actually when I went to college. So I went um, to school in Ottawa, Canada, and I took mechanical engineering. And um, back in sort of the, the early 90s, uh, the Canadian government had an internship program where any student that was in a science, technology, you know, engineering or math program could possibly get an internship with the Canadian government. And I was so fortunate because I applied and I did get the internship. I thought, wow, this is great because I'm actually going to sort of get a real job and get paid real money. And as it turns out, that internship really opened doors for me. So number one, um, with my mechanical engineering degree, the computer courses I was taking was limited. And this internship allowed me on the job um, computer programming training. Um, and back then, I learned how to program in C. And then additionally, it was super fascinating because, and the reason why I have an airplane on this slide is because I was uh, working for a part of the Canadian government that was focused on remote sensing. And remote sensing is when uh, radar technology is used in planes um, to hover over the ground and get a sense for the land's topography. Um, it can help understand like forest fires and where the forest fires might move to next, um, geology, 
there's all kinds of applications. And so it was really fascinating because I was in an office that was actually attached to an airplane hangar. So I also had an opportunity to work um, alongside, um, believe it or not, airplane mechanics, um, engineers, and then also pilots. Um, and it really opened my doors. And so I think um, really getting an opportunity to sort of step out of your comfort zone and take advantage of meeting with and talking to and working with um, lots of different groups of people will help make you realize um, where you want to sort of hone in on your interests. So one of the things I wanted to also talk to you about, I think my next slide, is about something called a growth mindset. Does anybody here know what a growth mindset is? Okay, not too many people, but um, so that's good. Having a growth mindset is really important, both when you're getting your education, but also when you start out in the workforce. And you can see here the opposite between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. Um, right now, um, I'm finding that, at least in the Silicon Valley and with the larger companies, there's a real emphasis towards um, fostering with employees, making sure that they have the tools to keep focused on having a growth mindset. And it's all about believing that you can learn something and that if you try, you can accomplish something. And that helping others and working with others will make you a better person and will make you understand how to collaborate. The whole idea that two heads are better than one, um, being mindful of how much effort you put into something and that it's the effort that you take that really matters, not always the, the outcome. And so I wanted to touch a little bit on growth mindset because for me, I think it was really important um, throughout my, my sort of my life. Um, for example, when I was in engineering in Ottawa, um, the school that I, I went to was actually called Last Chance U. Um, <laughs> so interestingly enough, they had um, a different philosophy than some of the other universities in Canada. So they had this idea that um, every student should get equal opportunity to education and that their final grades coming out of high school should not be the 100% um, the measurement of whether that person's going to be successful in, um, in university. And so they would start out some of their classes, like the engineering classes, with like, you know, say 3,000 people. And then going into second year, they would actually only have 1,500 people. And so the idea was that if you had, and one of my good friends at school, he came in and he had basically like a C plus average, B minus average, and he went into the engineering program with me. He did really well. And there were other guys that were in the courses with me. Um, one in particular, he was like rock star, superstar in his class in high school, and he came in and he really struggled. And so um, what I was gonna say was the growth mindset for me really helped me through sort of being told, you're sitting in your class with your peers and only one of, of two of you will be here next year. And so for me, I'm like, okay, I am gonna be one of these two people. I am gonna persevere this, I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna prove that I can get this done. And the growth mindset there really helped me. And it's not that I didn't have you know, stumbling blocks along the way. I'll be honest with you, as an example, I really struggled in second year. And I know now I really struggled because, number one, I didn't get the help I needed in first year, and I didn't spend time on some of the engineering fundamentals that I needed to. And so second year was really tough for me. And so I got a letter at the end of second year and basically said, you know, we'd like you to take some course, retake some courses over the summer, and if you can get a minimum um, grade point, then we'll let you into third year. I'm like, oh God. So, um, you know, again, perseverance, um, making mistakes, realizing you can overcome them, you're gonna learn from them, and sure enough, like, I, you know, in the summer I took two courses, I really focused, um, I worked hard, um, and then I went into third year. So, you know, I think it's just, I think it's not just about getting sort of a technical education, but also just believing in yourself, getting the support that you need, being inclusive and mindful of others, 
being a great team player, these things are really important. Um, and I'm glad that they're being emphasized more today. OK, so I'm going to walk super quickly through my career progression, because I think um, if you guys have questions or want to talk to me later, I can talk to you about that. But I did start out, so interestingly, I, here I graduated with this degree in mechanical engineering. And really, the only two things I knew how to do was um, software programming, computer programming, uh, and waitressing. So um, I was living in Ottawa, which was sort of Silicon Valley North. Um, there were quite a few jobs in software. And so I started out as a software programmer. I really enjoyed it because I loved the pace and the innovation and the type of work that I was doing. Um, but I quickly realized that I wanted to be in sort of a more customer-facing role. So within a few years, I moved actually to a very small company. It was only 40 people. And they did the most fascinating thing. Um, they had a group of us. I think there was about 15 of us um, that were all in customer-facing roles. Um, training, technical support, uh, consulting, education, um, pre-sales. And we did job sharing. And it was amazing. Um, the, the, the founders had this philosophy that if you got to touch a customer in a number of different ways, that would make you better at sort of supporting a customer's needs. I, I love that opportunity. Um, back then, um, searching for a job over the internet and Silicon Valley was just super hot. And so I moved down to the Bay Area right after that and um, took a job where I moved into sort of professional services and software consulting. Um, and then similarly, the marketing organization, so product management. And so product management is basically the organization that figures out what the customer needs. They write the requirements, and then they give those requirements to the software engineers. And so I moved into marketing via product management because I had a really good sense for what customer needs were. And they wanted me there to sort of have that voice of customer into the company. And then I, I moved um, up through a number of levels of marketing. And then for the last three years, I've been at Genentech um, as an associate director, working on sort of product strategy and management. And I think the other thing I want to touch on is that um, I, my experience firsthand is I have had great work opportunities, I think in large part because of my mechanical engineering degree, which has proven that I can pick up complex um, topics and, and ideas quickly. And then also, my computer programming experience was immensely valuable. And then what I've tried to do throughout my career is really foster my love of product and technology. Um, and that's really allowed me sort of to um, um, set myself um, as a unique individual against some of the other um, folks in marketing who probably are less technical. And then the other thing is, I've had you know, the great opportunity to move from Canada to the Bay Area. Um, and uh, additionally, I started out working in software, um, but then moved into life sciences. And so I think that not only do you have an opportunity to sort of set your career path in terms of what you might want to do, but also where you might want to live and the types of industries and work that you might want to do. OK, so um, one of the things I wanted to talk about just briefly is how did I make that transition from software marketing to Genentech? And um, obviously, um, a lot of it is networking and talking to the right people and getting connected and being at the right place at the right time. But also, um, for this particular role at Genentech, I had the right set of skills. So they were looking for somebody that had genomics experience, um, big data, data integration, um, and also just uh, software and technology. Um, because Genentech is now looking at, you know, we are becoming more of an information company. It's information data that's really going to inform um, the next sort of phase of therapeutic discovery. Um, and so they're really sort of bol bolstering their capabilities in that area. So finally, I think um, what I want to leave you with is, for me, um, even though when I graduated from mechanical engineering, I didn't work as a mechanical engineer, I've been so proud of that degree and the doors that it's opened. 
and also the software experience that I gained um, both in college and through my um, work experience um, during the summers in college. And then I think also too that, like I talked about, the, the growth mindset and, and believing in yourself is so important. Always believe that you can do anything, you know, and you can. Anything you set your mind to, you can do. And never be afraid to ask for help. In fact, a lot of companies that I worked at, the better companies really valued employees that asked for help. And they were always concerned that the employees that are off on their own, trying to do things on their own and not work with other people, you know, they're like, do they, do they, do they really understand what they're doing? Are they really sort of um, moving the needle? Are, are they working towards the same goals? So, you know, be mindful that the work that you're doing on your own is valuable, but also the work that you do with others is important too. Um, and Genentech's been a wonderful place to work because they are a company that's so inclusive of everybody. Um, uh, race, um, you know, I work with a lot of people um, that are disabled in one way, shape, or form. Um, I think that I've, I've experienced firsthand that, again, um, everybody has a huge potential inside them, and they just need to work hard to discover it. So thank you very much. All right, so we do have some time for questions. So if you have a question for Jennifer, go ahead and raise your hand, um, and I'm going to come give you the mic. Um, hi, um, I was wondering if you could give some advice to some of the kids in the room of how to go about finding an internship. How, how, what's the first step that they would take to find an internship or to, to get involved or, or to network like you were saying? Yeah. Is this so, a sixth grader or seventh grader? You have no idea. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good question. So I think, um, so my experience is the, the bigger companies um, and the much smaller companies, I think, have opportunities. And so the bigger companies like Genentech, they have programs in place. Now, I think that um, for um, folks your age, Genentech probably doesn't have like a summer internship, but they do have lots of different events throughout the year that are for um, you know, middle school students and the like. And so I um, encourage you to visit like Intel, Genentech, um, you know, go to their websites, and then um, you know, just f figure out who you might contact there. A good place to start would even be just like HR. And then your parents probably have friends that work at different companies. And so, you know, ask your parents like, hey, I'd love to like just, you know, help out with something. And so, um, like as an example, when I was in high school, um, my dad worked at a company and an engineering company, and they had a woman who, um, got injured suddenly and so they needed to fill the position pretty quickly and it was that it was just a data entry job um, but it gave me a sense for what it was like to sort of work in an office or work in the company so i would say definitely you know tap into your you know parents network and see if if there's any um, opportunities there and when i say small companies because small companies are always looking for help <laughs> at like a low cost or free. And then the bigger companies, they're set up to have these structured programs. And then finally, I know high school students and college students, like at, with Genentech and a lot of the other sites, you can actually go to the careers page and do a job search with internship. And they'll actually post all their internship jobs publicly. your exact role in Genentech as a mechanical, are you still uh, doing the role of being a mechanical engineer? Or? No, so I never, um, I never practiced mechanical engineering. So when I graduated from university, I jumped right into a software programming job. 
And from there, I moved into, you know, basically sort of technical support and professional services and training, and then from there into marketing. And then Genentech brought me on to do, I think the closest uh, equivalent would be like strategy, product strategy, uh, and product management. And so the company has been trying to figure out how do we better manage all of our data? Um, how do we bolster our infrastructure, like our, our networking, our storage, our compute, for some of the, the big scientific data that we're looking at. Um, you know, another example is, so um, uh, images of, of the eye, ophthalmology images, and images of the eye, and any other types of Im images, the company's only been storing the interpreted data. So like, okay, I looked at this image, and it has these characteristics. I've documented them. and. We've never kept these raw images. Well, just recently we've discovered that these raw images down to the pixel level are really important because of machine learning. And so now we're talking about trying to keep a lot more data than we used to because we have new technologies that can take advantage of some of this raw data. And so these are some of the things that I've been working on for the company. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, I was um, thinking about how you mentioned that you're in product development and how that concept might be new for middle schoolers. Can you describe more? I mean, you were talking about just now a little yeah, bit more yeah. product development and how, um, like, what's a like junior high level version? Of yeah, that? yeah. No, that's a good point. So, um, in the at least in the software world, um, when a company has a concept around a product they might build. Um, there are a couple of critical um, groups or functions that come together to build that product. And so obviously one part of it is the computer engineering, computer science, the, the programming group, right? The group that's writing all the code um, to develop that piece of software. And so whether it's like, you know, Dropbox or, you know, any of the the, the online companies, that's all um, software based. But the engineers don't usually know exactly what they need to build. And so there's a function called product management that actually goes out and talks to a number of different customers and asks them questions about what kind of t product they might want, what capabilities it might have, um, if they had a wish list, if it could do anything they wanted, what would that be? And they write all these requirements down, and then they detail them. And then this gets passed to the engineering team or the software developers to then take those like, written requirements and move it into code. Um, and then from there, usually, the set of requirements is way too broad to be done in one release. And so steps are taken and a roadmap is built where, um, you know, it's like it would be the same thing with building a house, right? Like you, you don't like just suddenly go from getting the foundation to putting the windows in. There's a bunch of steps that you take. And so it's the same thing with um, software development and product management. And product management is a great role where you're still staying very technical and working with software engineers, but you're also working with marketing who's touching the customers and sales, and then customers themselves firsthand. So is that helpful? Yeah. Yeah, see my son's four, so <laughs> <laughs> He's so far removed from that. If he was a little older, I think it would be easier for me to like explain some of these concepts. Was there so? Yeah. I'm in seventh grade. I'm thirteen. So, what did you do like in earlier school years, like elementary or like middle school? Like, like, what were your interests? in those times besides um, math, science? 
so, so I was not, um, I was not naturally mechanically inclined or anything like that. Um, I uh, played tennis when I was like in seventh and eighth grade. I also really loved ballet. Um, I also did like a lot of boating and swimming and water skiing. Um, I think for me, two, two things I think were really important. Number one, I think my, my dad in particular really encouraged an interest in math and science. Um, and, you know, he was, he was an important role model for me. And then I also think I just naturally gravitated to those things. Um, and I had, you know, I think it's like what I mentioned before is um, sometimes you have to seek out opportunities, other times opportunities will come to you. Um, there was nothing like this program that existed um, when I was your age. So you guys are so lucky to have something like this. And I know that there, like I mentioned, I know that Genentech also has events and I'm imagining other companies do too. But I think that there's um, also, you know, projects you can do at home and um, things, volunteer work and things to get um, involved in the community that, that would be helpful. All right, so we will have plenty of time. I encourage you to have conversations with Jennifer um, during the lunch hour. To wrap things up, um, you know, one of the things that a uh, few of us were actually talking about earlier this morning was about how so many people go to school for one specific thing mm -hmm. and then wind up in a very different career. Yeah. And you touched on this a little bit, but I'm hoping that you can reiterate um, your, um, your thoughts on this as we wrap things up. But can you tell us a little bit about how your degree, even though you're not specifically using it, how it's really helped you in the career that you're in now? Yeah, I mean, I think, so I think a couple things. Um, so I, the universities in Canada, I think, are slightly different than down here. And so when I, in my last year of high school, um, when I applied to engineering, when I started engineering, I was in engineering. There wasn't sort of the ability to sort of be general and then go into engineering. Um, and then once I was in, I was just very committed because I was, there were four women in a class of 60, and I very much was like, I have every reason to be here, just like any other guy in this class. Um, and then just because there were three other girls in the class with me, I didn't actually become friends with those girls because you become friends with people that you have things in common with. And not just because they're the same sex as you. Um, but, you know, to answer your question, I think that my degree was absolutely critical to getting that first job and a lot of the follow-on jobs. And actually, I don't have an MBA, and there are a ton of people who have been in roles similar to mine that have an MBA, and I think one of the things that's been an advantage is because I have such a technical background that that's allowed me to sort of stand out. And I think that, um, you know, the, the courses, the information that we learned, like, it was challenging. And so I think m what I've realized is at work, there isn't anything I can't learn or take on. Um, the other thing, too, is um, the fast pace and being overwhelmed and having a ton of work. Um, I experienced that in university. Like, there was always too much to do. And so that sort of prepared me also for the fast pace of like software and technology. Um, so yeah, so even though I'm not like working as a mechanical engineer, I think it really found, you know, formed the basis or the foundation around my ability to be very adept at learning a bunch of different things. Because I, I didn't really talk that much about it, but I moved from software and I spent five years doing marketing at a DNA sequencing company. So I had to like dig out a college biology textbook um, and read up about um, DNA and recombinant DNA and transcriptomics. And so I think it just, 
you know, it, it sets the stage for being open and eager and excited about learning new things. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Let's hear it for her one more time.